Hello, this is Dr. Paul Cottrell, and I am going to talk about a little bit more history on strategic warfare with China and Taiwan and how the United States is strategizing this with the Northern Front and the Southern Front. This video is going to be more focused on the Southern Front. Um, I did two videos dealing with the Northern part, so please go to those videos. I don't remember which episode it was, but um, it was about a week ago that I did them. So we're gonna talk about the Philippine, the Philippines and uh, some of the bases, a little bit of the history. But before I do that, please go to my store, the-studio-reykjavik.com. And if you could, please help support my work by donating. You can donate on the website, on the homepage. You can donate through Stripe, PayPal, or Buy Me a Coffee. That way, uh, it uh, helps support the videos that I do. I have thousands of videos for free to help to teach you a little bit about uh, the geopolitics that's going on in our current affairs, uh, the financial conditions of, of the market, and uh, what's going on and how to improve your health. So, uh, so please, if you could help support my work, you can also be a paid member on my Patreon channel. The link is in the description of this video. Please go to the Patreon channel and be a paid member. The higher tier members also get some access to some of my medical lectures that I have done. So with that, I also want to bring up that uh, I have uh, some new products. All right, it's uh, the studio products. And I have five new products on my store. I have NAC, I have Ubiquinol, which is CoQ10, uh, the active form of CoQ10, uh, NAD+, vitamin K2, this is the, the MK7 version, and natokinase. So, um, Basically, NAC will help with your immune system. It also improves your lung health. CoQ10 is really important as part of the anti-aging protocol. So um, ubiquinol is the active form for CoQ10. I'll go into a little bit more details of the, the mechanisms and why to be taking these things. But these are things that I take every day. NAD plus is really important to improve cellular energy. This can be coupled with um, niacin and uh, NMN. The vitamin K2, MK7 is really important. This will help with bone health. It'll help to absorb uh, calcium. It is synergistic with D3, vitamin D3. If you've been listening to my protocol, if you take vitamin K2, MK7 with D3, C60, turmeric, ashwagandha, um, these and, and omega-3, they are all synergistic to reduce plaque. So it improves your cardiovascular system. So I'll do another video to explain all that mechanism. But basically, by taking K2, MK7, D3, ashwagandha, turmeric, C60, and omega-3, over a period of, of weeks to months, you're going to start noticing a reduction in plaque buildup in your arteries. So this is a great way to sl slow down the buildup of plaque and to uh, re reverse it. So um, this is really important if you really want to improve your cardiovascular health. The whole idea is, the whole idea here is stacking. Stacking is super important when it comes to supplementation. Natokinase will help to improve your blood flow. It also reduces uh, clotting um, because it's it's fibrinolytic. And um, in addition, if you take higher doses of natokinase, you can actually bring down your LDL, uh, your, your LDL levels and your cholesterol levels at higher doses. So uh, with this, 
Um, please go to my store, the-studio-reykjavik.com and get the NAC. So this, this is, uh, helps to support your immune system. And um, the ubiquinol, which is the active form for CoQ10. NAD plus helps with the cellular energy. K2, which helps with cardiovascular and bone health. And the natokinase, which helps blood flow, reduces clots, and at higher doses will actually improve your uh, cholesterol count and your lipid profile. So with that said, please go to my store, the-studio-reykjavik.com and try out my new studio products. So now we want to go with Taiwan. Um, so this whole series, we, we talked about the Northern Front and how the United States is working with Japan and the island chains here and Korea to, to um, block China from moving into the Korea Strait here. And for China to go through the East China Sea through the island chain, the first island chains into the into the Pacific. So the United States and its allies have have um, built bases and capabilities to prevent China from coming through. Now, what this series, these next few videos, will be the Southern Front. This is the nine dash line. So this is what the South China Sea, the, the Chinese are trying to prevent uh, freedom of navigation of other countries. Now it's important to mention that China wants to take over Taiwan. Now, you know, they've mentioned that. This is not speculative, they, they've mentioned this. Now the question is, is it gonna be done peacefully or, or, or militarily? So let's let's talk about this a little bit. So uh, Taiwan is uh, is it this island uh, is run by the ROC and the PRC is chi is China. Okay, so you got China and you have Taiwan. Now the Chinese are you got to look at the topology of the island here. It's kind of but the island has a mountain range and it's and and um a flatland. The flatland is on the west side of Taiwan and the mountain range is on the east side and in the middle. All right. So the way the United States has positioned itself, it wants to protect the east, the east side of the island, while the Chinese are forced to invade the west side okay now china would like to come through and try to attack these islands here to try to move around and also attack the east side of taiwan but that's why the the japanese and the u.s military have positioned bases on these islands I've done a video on the details of those bases. In addition, they also want to, to attack Okinawa, okay? And Okinawa, um, so they want to attack Okinawa and these islands so they can come around and, and uh, do China to come in on the west side of Taiwan and the east side. So this is the reason why these islands are so important to the United States and Japan and to Ta to Taiwan. Okay, so that means that the Chinese would want to come through here. Now this this strait here is called the Bashi Channel. This this right around here is the Bashi Ch Channel. And this right here is what is called the Luzon Strait. So the Chinese want to go through the Luzon Strait to try to attack and control the the island of Taiwan and its shipping ports. All right, there's shipping ports here that that have access to to the Pacific. All right, so the United States. I'm going to give you a little bit of history now about 
the Philippines and how important it is for the United States to protect the Luzon, Luzon Strait and the Bashi Channel. Okay, so um, in 1898, the United States um, captured the Philippines from Spain and held it as kind of a pseudo colony of the United States or a territory. I don't, I don't, it was never, I don't think officially in a territory, but it, it was in our possession till 1946. And it was given independence to the Philippines after, after World War II. But we maintained bases and there were two bases there. Um, one was an air base and one was a Navy, Navy base. The air base was uh, called Clark and the Navy base was the Subic uh, Bay base. Now, in, in uh, 1991, two things happened. One was the dissolving of the USSR, the fall of the Berlin Wall, and uh, also Mount Pinatubo tubo blew up, okay? There was an eruption. It caused so much damage from that eruption that Clark Base and the uh, Subic Bay Base could not be used. So the United States left the Philippines. Now, I think this is really important that even if you have some sort of strategic position, it makes a lot of sense that Mother Nature could create such a disruption that it you lose that strategic position. Um, or an, or one of the one of the um, the parties within a war may actually gain strategic advantage depending on you know which side you're looking at. In this case, the Chinese gained strategic advantage when the United States left Clark Base and Subic Bay Base. All right. So with that said. Uh, fast forward to 2010s, uh, the Chinese really pushed hard with protecting their nine dash line. All right. The United States is not in the Philippines anymore because they left in 92 and or 91, 92. And the, the Chinese are uh, being belligerent in terms of their nine dash line here. Now, at this time, Scarborough Shoal and the Spratly Islands, Spratly Islands are right here. Scarborough Shoal is around here, I think. I think that's it right there. I'm not sure why it's not popping up. But Scarborough Shoal and the Spratly Islands, China... Um, claims them. This is in the in 2010s because of the nine dash line. So the Philippines start to worry about the aggressive behavior from the from the Chinese. The Chinese military were actually being aggressive with the fishing, the, the fishermen from the Philippines because the Chinese want to control the um the fishing rights of the nine dash line even though it's in international waters so the philippines in 2010 this is during obama's administration created a 10-year pact with the united states to return to the philippines and they started with five bases and those bases i didn't write most of them down but those bases are primarily ar ar around this this area right here okay so there were five bases, uh, and in 2016, they were, they were stations. So the pact was agreed upon in 2014, and the bases were established and stationed in 2016. Fast forward to 2023, there were four more bases that were added, and they were added up in this area here. Now, that's important because you had the five, five bases to protect the Philippines and to kind of put a little bit of pressure in the nine dash line. 
but these other five, these other four bases in Luzon help to protect that Luzon Strait and the uh, Bashi Channel. Because remember, the Chinese are going to have a hard time as long as these islands uh, are effective in terms of defense and maybe even off and even offense. Um, the Chinese are going to have a hard time coming this way to get to the east side of the island, right? Remember, this is a mountain range. So the Chinese are going to get bogged down if they just attack the west side of Taiwan. So they're going to have a problem getting through the defense system that the Japanese and the Americans have on the northern side the east northern the northeast side of, of, of this of Taiwan. So the Chinese are going to be forced to attack on the west and also try to go through the Luzon Strait and try to control the ports and attack from the east. Well that's the reason why these four bases on Luzon are so important. Now some of the bases are going to some of the bases are um, Naval Base Camelo o Osias, uh, Camp Melcar, Macar, Della Cruz, which is in the north, Bala. I think it's Balabak Island in the south. Not sure. I think it's, it's Balabak Island. Balabak Island, Philippines. Okay. So there, so Balabak, so we have a base there. So you can see that we're positioning ourselves on the nine dash line to be able to check and, and, and um, put some sort of pressure on China, especially in the Spratly Islands. And then the other one is Lal, low airport in the north. So the point here is, is that we have nine total bases now. Potentially a new base is being retrofitted and that is the um, the Subic Bay base, which was damaged from the eruption from Mount Pinatubo. But as of yet, I don't believe that that base is active. So you get a better understanding here is that it's really that the United States forward projection onto China with these island chains are really important to be able to position against China's aggression against Taiwan. Because with bases here, with the U.S.'s bases here, we can put pressure in the South China Sea, also protect the Luzon Strait, and these island chains are, are you know, protecting and putting northern pressure in, in the in in the battle if the Chinese decide to try to take Taiwan. Now, as we're moving forward. In this, we'll also be able to choke hold China because China gets a lot of energy through our favorite friend Iran. And so there's going to be this waterway for energy coming through to China. Now, if the United States can control the nine dash line, especially some of the choke points in Malaysia and in Indonesia and put forward pressure on China in the South China Sea, 
then energy products will be delayed, if not completely halted for China. This is the reason why China is trying to do this, this trade route through Ubiquistan and Kazakhstan and you know all these Stan countries to get to Iran because they know that the United States is going to try to stop their energy shipping through these these islands through our bases and our military projection or our navy so they're trying china is trying to try to, to you know get some sort of pipeline or some, some sort of way to get energy through here now in the news china seems to be siding with the russians but i don't think that it's that simple i don't think it's that simple and i think that there is some sort of um adversarial undertone between china and russia because when china was doing these agreements with the the stand countries in this region they didn't do it with russia they didn't they didn't discuss it with russia they didn't involve russia and that upset putin a, a great deal because Russia believes that Kazakhstan and some of these other stands are, you know, their own satellites. So China is being belligerent, but China also knows that they need this, they need this trade route for energy. All right. So now you have a, a better under understanding of the it it's not just Israel here, what's going on in Israel. With, with with Lebanon and Syria and Gaza and all that, it's also involving Iran, and this is why China isn't is isn't is is in play. On top of it, Ukraine and the energy flowing through and Russia. So Ukraine, Russia, China, Iran, the Philippines, Taiwan—they're all connected. What's going on in Ukraine? What's going on in Israel in the Middle East? In Iran. In, in China and Russia, Taiwan, they're all connected. That's why I keep on saying that this three front war is this. This is we're actually seeing the the emergence of a world war. Now, you know, we were thinking that World War Three was going to be just a nuclear big nuclear explosion that that was going to last for twelve minutes and everyone's dead. Right? I'm speaking in hyperbole here, but uh, maybe World War Three is not that way. Maybe World War Three is different. Um, but the point here is, is that there's definitely China feels threatened by the United States. Taiwan feels threatened by China. And China's trying, trying to find ways that when the energy embargo does take place, um, that they have some means to extract energy from Iran. So hopefully you learned a little bit. I'll be doing another uh, video on, on this to go a little bit more detail, but you get an idea of why the Philippines are so important for the Luzon Strait to protect the east side of Taiwan. So China can't control all of Taiwan through their invasion. See, what the United States is trying to do is, is they're trying to they're trying to, maybe they can't prevent China from invading Taiwan, but they can bog them down to the point where they may have to retreat after they invade. Because these this island, this island has flatland and mountainous range. And this mountainous range is probably going to be very difficult for the Chinese. So with that said, thank you for listening. Please make sure you follow all my channels. I have four channels on YouTube. All the links are in the description of this video. I have Brighton, BitChute, and Rumble. So please follow me on those channels. It's really important to follow me on X and Getter so you get updates. And uh, please share my links and ask your social media to follow me so you get um, information on 
the coming crisis with China and Taiwan, what's going on in the Middle East, what's going on with Ukraine, because these things are all tied together, how they may perturbate the financial markets. And uh, there's these new things that are happening, you know, in terms of our health, um, new pathogens that are popping up and you need to get informed about it and how to mitigate that crisis and how to boost your health in general, how to slow down the aging process and how to you know, boost up your immune system. So please go to my store, the-studio-reykjavik.com and help support my, my work and, um, and get the products that will help to improve your health. Thank you for listening and have a nice day.